So now we are continuing on force vectors. Now this, these methods that I'll be going over today is the preferred method in respect to using the parallelogram law as we saw previously. This one deals with multiple forces being applied, not just two. So when it comes to having multiple forces applied, this method is better over the parallelogram law. So let's get into it. So let's go ahead and do an example that has multiple forces, not just two force vectors. So for this example, we have three force vectors. We have one that's 200 newtons, another one that's 150 and 100, and we each have their respective angles, 35, 25, and 35 degrees. Now we're supposed to find the resultant force of these three vectors and the direction. So we just split them up into we just split up the these vectors into the x and y components and from then we could add up all the x components and all the y components and from here we use the pythagorean theorem to find the resultant force so let's go ahead and do that so instead of drawing a triangle for each of the vectors i'm just going to represent it as a smaller version so let's say this is the y component of the 200 newton vector and this is the x component of that vector so the y component of this one is nothing more than 200 newtons times sine of 35 degrees this is where you're going to be using um what's called as so toa so sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So this is exactly what I use for the y component of this 200 newton vector. We have sine of 35 is equal to the opposite, which is the y component, over the hypotenuse, which is the 200 newton. And in this case, the x component is 200, 200 um, cosine 35 degrees. So, of course, you just plug it into your calculator, and we get this one is 114.7 newtons, and the other one is 163.8, so 163.8 newtons after we solve for it. So, equal sign, equal sign. So we do the exact same thing for all the other vectors. So let's go ahead and draw it out. Now, one thing I did want to mention is if perhaps you're still struggling with the idea of trig with all these force vectors, you're more than welcome to draw it out separately and solve. So let's go ahead and just essentially redo the 200 Newton vector um, right over here let's go ahead and just draw that triangle alone and ignore the rest newton vector and this is the x component of that vector and we know the angle here 35 degrees and this is going to be your y component so we just use simple trig in this case sine 35 sine 35 is equal to um, opposite over hypotenuse so just solving for this one I guess let's say opposite adjacent let's just call it that so sine 35 using Sokotol sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse in this case our, our hypotenuse the longest length of this triangle is 200 newtons so our only this one is 200. Our only unknown is O. So we just multiply both sides of the equation, move the 200 to that side. And so O is equal to 200 sine 35 degrees. Now you do the same thing for cosine. Cosine 35 degrees of this triangle is equal to adjacent over the hypotenuse and we have the hypotenuse being 200 newtons so solving for the a a is equal to 200 newtons cosine 35 and so this is how we solve for 
the components of that specific vector. And all we do is essentially repeat the same process for each triangle that we have um, in each vector. So for the 150 newtons, we know that's 25 degrees with respect to the vertical axis. And we essentially split it up into the appropriate x components and the appropriate y components. And so let's go ahead and do that. So those, although this seems a bit messy, I went ahead and solved for each one. So for the 150 newtons, we have the x component being 63.4 for the y component 135.9 and finally for the 100 newton vector we have the x um, component of that vector being 81.9 newtons and the y component being 57.4 so so the first step when you have multiple vectors you split them up to its x and y components now once you have all of that which could be a little bit time consuming this is where you add all the forces um, in the x direction as well as add all the forces in the y direction. So let's go ahead. So for the starting from the left hand side, the x component for the 200 newtons is 163.8. Now I'm going to I'm going to make my convention going to toward the right is positive. So 163.8 in this case is negative. So it's negative 163.8. This of course is newtons. So just keep that in mind. Now for the 150 newton vector, we have the x-axis being 63.4. So positive 63.4 newtons. As well as the final one, we have 81.9. So once you add that up, you get negative 18.5 newtons. Now, we have 18.5, but the negative sign essentially just tells us the, the direction. Since I assumed going right is positive and we get a negative number, that means that this is 18.5 heading in the opposite direction. 18.5 newtons heading towards the left. This is our um, added force of all the x components. Now, adding all the y, I'm going to say going up is the positive direction. So for the first vector, we have... 114.7 uh, but it's going downward so it's negative 114.7 newtons the other one is also negative as well 135.9 the last one they're all negatives in this case is 57.4 which we get and we get negative 308 newtons. The negative just means that the direction is going downward, which is the opposite of what I assumed, right? Going up is positive. So since we end up getting a negative number, that means the direction of it is going downward. Now to solve for the resultant force, this is where we go ahead and draw the a new triangle. Since we have the resultant force vector, in this case we have it split into components. This is the resultant force in the x direction. This is the resultant force in the y direction. So let's go ahead and redraw the triangle for this resultant force. So we have 18.5 newtons heading to the left in the x axis, which is why we got the negative because it's heading on the opposite direction of what I assumed. And we have negative 308 newtons going which is essentially is 308 newtons going downward so we find so once we add all the forces in the x and y component essentially the this these are the components of the resultant force since we have the components we essentially just draw out and from here we get the resultant force let's call it r and of course using pythagorean theorem we have another triangle r is equal to the square root of 308 squared plus 18.5 squared squared and finally our resultant force is equal to it's equal to 308.6 newtons now we found the resultant force but what exactly is the angle in this case let's just say what is the angle with respect to the vertical axis and let's call this alpha so using trig we have sine and cosine and we have either or in this case we could use tangent so using Sokotoa, 
tangent alpha is equal to opposite, which is 18.5, over adjacent, which is 308. And finally, using the tangent inverse here to find alpha, we get and finally, we have the angle, which is 3.4 degrees with respect to the vertical axis. Now, one thing is whenever you're making these drawings, they're, of course, not up to scale. You're just eyeballing it. OK, this is the approximate length of this one. This is the other one. So you, you could see you're getting a very small angle. So in reality, your angle should be very small. But of course, we're, when it comes to hand drawing this is not going to be as accurate but these calculations are in fact correct just don't confuse yourself with that because this was my personal experience when i was drawing this i, I was asking myself wait 3.4 degrees it doesn't seem like it should be that but that's only because of our inaccuracy to draw these um up to scale to the appropriate dimensions so this is the preferred method when you're dealing with multiple force vectors and to summarize for with each of the vectors, you split them all up into its appropriate x and y axis. Then you sum up the, all the x components and you sum up all the y components. And from here, you have the x and the y component of the resultant force. So you could go ahead and draw the triangle. You have your direction in the x axis. You have your direction in the y axis. You could go ahead and draw the triangle for your resultant force. And from here is just trig. You're using Pythagorean theorem to solve for your resultant force, which essentially is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared when you're dealing with a right triangle here, right? This one is c a b and so forth and this is how you solve for your resultant force finding the angle is also a trig in this case we use tangent you can use sine or cosine as well and it will, you'll get the same exact results so this is the the how to solve the resultant force and its direction given multiple force vectors applied onto an object or uh, onto a point